Yo, what's up guys? Um, it's Noah here, breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Wednesday, March the 4th. Uh, we're going to cover Wednesday's nine-game slate, go position by position, uh, just talk about the plays that stand out to me the most looking at the slate on Tuesday night. I'll give you guys some of my early thoughts, uh, what I'm liking the night before, what I see at each position, just the plays that really stand out to me. Uh, we'll look at DraftKings pricing like, uh, like we always do. We will switch over to Yahoo as well. We'll talk about some guys I do like uh, with Yahoo's pricing. Um, just before we do get started, though, guys, as always, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like down below. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. If you are new to the channel, if you have not subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you do hit that subscribe button. Um, click the notification bell as well, so that way uh, you get notified every time I upload. You'll never miss out on any of my new videos. I do pretty much upload every single day, uh, so I have a ton of content coming out for you guys covering all these NBA slates. Um, when baseball season starts in about a month or two, or about a month and a half, I will be covering baseball. So I'm going to have a ton of content out. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that way you do get notified every time I upload. Uh, also, if you would like, you can check out all the Patreon exclusive content I do have to offer. Uh, that is linked down below in the description. You can get access to my article, my updated core plays, uh, the Discord chat you can join. All that is available through Patreon, uh, which you can uh, check out down below and see all that I have to offer. Also, if you would like, you can follow me on Twitter, which is linked down below in the description, at DFS by Noah. If you do want to follow me on Twitter, stay up to date with me, uh, you can do so there. But let's go ahead and take a look at point guard for today. We'll start off at the top here where Luka Doncic is our most expensive option at the position, 10900 And overall, he is the second most expensive player on the slate behind Giannis, who is 11-4. Um, so just talking about Luka today, this is obviously a great spot for him at home against the Pelicans. Fantastic matchup here, uh, pretty fast-paced game. Right now, we don't have a total yet on this game. Uh, of the nine games we have, there only three games have a total right now, as, the, as of the time I'm recording this um, Tuesday night. Once we do get a total for this game, I have to assume it's probably going to come in either the highest or second highest behind Washington-Portland. It's going to be between those two games on which is the highest total on the slate. Uh, regardless, though, great spot here for Luka against this Pelicans team that is playing at the fourth fastest pace this season. Uh, this is a pretty good matchup in terms of like uh, their defense. Port or the Pelicans, really not that good of a defensive team. They rank 21st in defensive rating. They have been improving. Uh, we saw like at the early part of the season they were like 28th, 29th. Like they were I'm pretty sure at one point they were dead last in defensive rating. Getting Zion back, getting this team fully healthy, like they're they've definitely been improving on the defensive end. But with just how fast they play. It steps up really well for Luka Doncic. Uh, this guy's pretty much matchup proof to begin with. I mean, nobody's going to be able to slow him down one-on-one. -on -one. He's had success against the Pelicans this season, averaging 58 DraftKings points through three games against them. Uh, the price tag on DraftKings, I think, is still too cheap at 10-9. Even with Porzingis expected back today, like, I still think this is too cheap of a price tag for Luka. I know he was really disappointing last game with Porzingis out. Only put up 43 DK points in 38 minutes against the Bulls. I would expect a big bounce back game from him here and a much better matchup. We know he's going to play big minutes if it's a close game, and I think this game should be close. Luka's one of my favorite pay-up options today. Really like him on DraftKings at 10-9. I like him on Yahoo as well at $55, but we're going to talk about a lot of guards in the mid-range. I think the mid-range at guard today on Yahoo is really loaded. So for that reason, I'm not going to include Luka into the early core, uh, but potentially if we get more value as the day goes on, he could make it into the updated core plays. Uh, you can access those over on Patreon uh, you, if you would like. Uh, but I do really like Luka here. Looking at other point guards, uh, great spot for Damian Lillard. He is expected to play today, but I'm pretty positive he's going to be on a minutes limit. Uh, hasn't played in almost a month. I have to assume he's going to be limited. It was a groin injury. So yeah, just keep an eye on that. Even if he plays, he's just closely priced enough to Luka to where I'd rather go to Luka over Lillard. Uh, so no interest in Lillard, even though he, it's a really good matchup. Other guys, though, we can maybe look to. Obviously, with Lillard back, I'm not going to pay 8600 for CJ McCollum, so I'm kind of off him. Uh, Drew Holiday is someone I like a lot today. He's pretty expensive on DraftKings. He's 8300 I don't know if I really get to Drew on, D or Drew on DK, but if we look at Yahoo's pricing, I think Drew is one of the more underpriced players on Yahoo. And like I said earlier, I think the mid-range at guard is very loaded on Yahoo, and Drew Holiday is one of those guys that really stands out in the mid-range. $31, I mean, this this is just too cheap of a price tag for Drew Holiday. A guy that's going to play 36 to 38 minutes a night. Most nights he's going to give you probably 40 to 45 fantasy points. This feels like a spot where you would expect him to have a pretty good game. They're going to need him to defend Luka. I have to imagine uh, he sees 
or he's going to be on Luka defensively because he's probably their better defender, or their best defender, I should say. He's probably their best chance at slowing down Luka. I think he's my favorite Pelican to go to on Yahoo at $31. Uh, Brendan Ingram's 32, so I really like him as well. Zion's kind of expensive. He's 36. I really like Drew, though, at 31. If you want to play him and Luka together, I have no problems with that. If you want to get that positive correlation, you definitely can. He stands out, though, as one of the better mid-range options. I mean, this is still a guy that's going to average about 1.2, uh, about 1.15, 1.2 fantasy points per minute. His usage rate is still high. Uh, it's third on the team behind Ingram and Zion. I think he's got like a 27% usage rate on the season. Really like Drew here. I uh, really like the spot for him. And on Yahoo at 31 bucks, he really stands out over there. Uh, so he's probably my favorite guard, like in that kind of mid-range. A guy like Spencer Dinwiddie you could definitely target in a pace-up spot against Memphis. Uh, this game I expect to have a pretty high total as well. We do have a total on this game, and it's got right now it's at 225, uh, which is the highest of the three games we have. Pretty good spot for Spencer Dinwiddie. No Kyrie Irving. Just going to continue to get a lot of usage, a lot of just overall or his production, I should say. It's going to see a big spike with Kyrie off the floor. I think if I can, I'd probably try and get Drew Holiday over him, but uh, Dinwiddie's a fine option. Kimball Walker is expected to rest today, so we'll definitely talk about some Boston guys. Uh, Jason Tatum was also out Tuesday, so we'll need to watch his status heading into Wednesday. And also, Gordon Hayward got hurt Tuesday night um, in their game against the Nets. So there's a chance that Boston could be without Kimba, Gordon Hayward, and Jason Tatum today. We know they're going to be without Kimba, but Hayward getting hurt Tuesday night, maybe he sits today. Uh, Tatum wasn't able to play Tuesday, so there's a chance he could be out again. Going to need to keep an eye on Boston. They're definitely one of the teams we're going to have to really focus on uh, in terms of the injuries. Could be a lot of value coming from Boston, uh, especially if we do get some updates on these injuries as the day goes on. Uh, but just looking at other guards in the mid-range, um, on the other side of that Memphis-Brooklyn game, I think John Morant at 7,200 looks really appealing. Uh, Morant and just the, the Grizzlies in general were a big letdown on the last slate against Atlanta. But that really wasn't their fault. I mean, they just won that game by almost, or they won that game by over 40 points. None of the starters played at all in the fourth quarter. John Morant only played 24 minutes. Joe Val only played like 25 minutes. A lot of the starters were limited there. Um, if you get 34, or like his normal 32, 34 minutes from Morant in that game against the Hawks, he's probably going to put up 40, 45 DK points. This is a spot against Brooklyn. You would expect he plays his full allotment of minutes. I do like this matchup. Uh, the Nets, in terms of defensive or in terms of their defense versus point guards, really hasn't been that good this season. Uh, Morant did have a big game against the Nets earlier in the year, 50 DK points against them in 32 minutes. I believe that was like his breakout game uh, that he just kind of really exploded, had 30 points in that game. I'm pretty sure that's his high for the season, if I'm not mistaken. So like this spot for John Morant, I think it's 7,200. He looks like my probably my favorite 7K guard. I'd probably prefer him over Lonzo, Chris Paul, Given the savings, I honestly think I'd go to him over Dinwiddie as well, uh, given the uh, $600 savings. Um, Marcus Smart's expensive today at $7K, but if like if we get no Kimba, no Hay or no Hayward, no Tatum, if all three of those guys are out, like uh, I think Marcus Smart is still in play even at $7K. But if like Tatum plays, I, I doubt I go to Smart. If Hayward plays, if both guys play, then I really have no interest in Smart. He does get a bump since Kimba is expected to sit today. But at 7K, like you need Smart to put up 40 plus DK points for him to be a really good tournament play at this salary. I just don't know if Smart like has 40 point upside in him on a nightly basis. I think he had a, I'm pretty sure he had a big game Tuesday night, but I just don't know if we can expect a repeat performance from him. So at 7K, tough to roster him unless like unless Boston's just really shorthanded and they're going to be without. If they wind up without three of those five starters, then yeah, I could see going to Smart. But other than that, I'll probably be off of him. Uh, Kobe White, however, I really like in this mid-range. He's probably my favorite play uh, overall in this price range and one of my favorite plays overall at guard. So last game with da against Dallas, uh, Kobe White was pretty popular that, that slate. Played 32 minutes against Dallas and had 35 DraftKings points. Really, it was just kind of a mediocre game from him. He only shot 40% from the field. He did take 20, or he had 20 field goal attempts, uh, took nine threes as well. He, he did contribute with six rebounds and five assists. Uh, did see a spike in usage in that game because Zach Levine was out. And we do already know that Zach Levine is going to be out for, I believe, a week or so. Um, he's already been ruled out for this game. And if you take Levine off the floor, uh, Kobe White actually sees a pretty nice bump in usage. Really, he's going to be the guy they go to in terms of scoring. Like, it's been Levine. There's, this season, Levine's been, like, their go-to scorer. 
But now that Levine's out, I expect Kobe White to be that guy. Coming off the bench, it's going to see a lot of usage. Uh, looking at his, his numbers this season with um, Levine off the floor, he's got about a 28% usage rate, averaging over a fantasy point per minute, 20% uh, assist percentage, just really solid numbers from Kobe White. Going to play 32 to 34 minutes if this is a close game. It's a fantastic matchup against Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota playing at the third fastest pace in the league. In terms of defensive rating, they have not been that great on the defensive end. Uh, 20th in defensive rating. Really good spot for Kobe White. Uh, really like him in this mid-range. Probably one of my favorite options here. 6,200 on DK. Looking over to Yahoo. I really like him on Yahoo as well. Looks like another strong uh, mid-range guard option at 22 bucks at point guard. Love this spot for Kobe White. Um, definitely one of my favorite plays here. Uh, but taking a look at other guards, um, one of the teams we could definitely be targeting for value today is going to be Detroit. We do already know that Derrick Rose is going to be out. Bruce Brown is going to be out as well. So Detroit is going to be very thin at point guard. Um, we're going to talk about Brandon Knight in a second. He's also questionable. So if he were to sit, like we could definitely see a guy like maybe Langston Galloway, Jordan uh, Boone. Like I don't even know who they would use as their starting point guard. I assume it'd probably be like Galloway maybe. He could be in play for a value. So we'll talk about him when we get there. Uh, but I don't think there's really anything else that stands out like in this 5K range besides uh, Kobe White at 6'2 six, six you could go to. Like, I just don't see anything here that really catches my eye. Like, R.J. Barrett's coming off a big game, but it's a tough spot against the Jazz, and he's been priced up to 5800 so don't have a ton of interest there. Maybe with Levine out, you could go to Sadoransky at 5800 but I just feel more confident in Kobe White. I think Kobe White gives you more upside, and he's only a couple hundred more, so I'd probably just rather get to him. So I guess we can talk about some of the value we have at this position. So with Derrick Rose and Bruce Brown both out, I think... If Brandon Knight plays today, he looks like probably one of the better values on the slate, at least right now, as I'm recording this Tuesday night. That could all change heading into Wednesday, depending on what injuries break. We could maybe get some better value. But right now, Brandon Knight looks really good at only 4,500. Uh, played 25 minutes last game against the Kings. Um, I know in the first half, I think he had played like nine minutes, and then Derrick Rose got hurt, which obviously helped Brandon Knight. He was able to uh, finish the game with 25 minutes, 30 DraftKings points. Uh, he's been relatively productive on a point-per-minute basis, averaging about a fantasy point per, me, uh, point per minute this season or close to it. If he starts today, which I assume if he's healthy, he will start, I think he probably plays close to 30 minutes, if not more. He's only 4,500. Like, if we're going to get 30 minutes from Brandon Knight at 4,500, he definitely looks like one of the better values at that salary. Now, it's not the best matchup against OKC, but Detroit just doesn't have a ton of healthy point guards on the roster. Like, we'll take a look at their... Uh, their roster real quick so we know Derrick Rose is out Bruce Brown is out Luke Kennard still not healthy so in terms of guys that can handle the ball that pretty much leaves Svi McKay Luke Langston Galloway Derrick Walton Jr like who knows if he actually gets any minutes Jordan Boone we don't really know if he's going to get any minutes they do have guys like Walton Jr and Boone who could get some run off the bench but I think most likely they're going to probably give Brandon Knight close to 30 minutes if he plays today now, if he gets ruled out as the day goes on Wednesday, if we get an update there and he's out, I would probably pivot to either Langston Galloway, probably Langston Galloway, assuming he starts. Whoever gets the start at point guard, that would probably be the guy I would go to, which I assume would be Galloway. But if Knight plays, I really like him as a value option. Uh, he has minimum salary on Yahoo, so I think you can definitely look to him over there as well. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of mid-range options I like at guard today. So you don't have to go tonight. Like he's not a must play by any means, but definitely stands out as one of the better punt plays on Yahoo at minimum salary, assuming he does play. Uh, with the positional flexibility on DraftKings, uh, you can play Knight. Or with how like the positions work, I mean, you have four spots. You can play Brandon Knight. Whereas on Yahoo, you're kind of limited to just three spots. It does limit your kind of roster flexibility a little bit. And we're going to talk about even more uh, guards I like in the mid-range on Yahoo, which is going to limit my interest in Brandon Knight. Uh, but if he starts today, I really like him as a value option. Uh, but I think that's probably it for point guard value plays for cheap options. Um, I know Aaron Holiday started last game with Victor Oladipo out. He played 35 minutes, but just wasn't very productive. Only 16 DK points. Don't really think we need to go there, even if he starts again for Oladipo. Just probably not a guy I really look to. Um, now, if or depending on what injuries shake out for Boston, we could maybe see Brad Wanamaker get a lot of run off the bench. Could maybe even wind up starting today. I doubt he starts. Like They're most likely going to start in the backcourt, Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown. But if we know Kim was going to be out, so with him out, that obviously is a boost for Brad Wanamaker. But if we get no Jason Tatum and no Gordon Hayward as well, like we could see the Celtics run a lot of three-guard lineups where they have 
Uh, Brown, Wanamaker, and Smart on the floor a lot. Could maybe even see them start those three guys together. I don't know if they do that, but 3,500 for Brad Wanamaker. If he's going to play about mid-20s and minutes off the bench with Kimba out today, a really good matchup against the Cavs. I think he is definitely in play as a punt play. Um, if Tatum and Hayward were to both sit, that would just make me even more interested in Wanamaker because that just frees up even more minutes just around the kind of around the team. Like They could divvy up the minutes different ways. They could let Jalen Brown play the three and the four more. Uh, which could allow Brad Wanamaker to get on the court more. So just a lot of ways uh, the minutes could go there. I do like him as a value option, but let's go ahead and move on to shooting guard. Well, I guess we'll talk about the Detroit guys real quick. Uh, so if Brandon Knight does not play, you've got Darrell Walton Jr. and Jordan Boone, 3,300, 3K. If one of those two guys were to start for Brandon Knight, if he were to sit, then you could obviously pivot to them as values. I did want to mention them. Let's go ahead and move on to shooting guard now, looking at this position. So at the top, you got Bradley Beal for 10600 against Portland. Uh, this is a great spot for Bradley Beal, but I just don't know if I can play him over a guy like Luka Doncic. I think I'd rather roster Luka for just 300 more. I know Beal's been playing at an incredibly high level as of late, but he is somewhat scoring dependent, whereas a guy like Luka can contribute in all categories, has triple-double upside. It's unlikely you get a triple-double from Bradley Beal. Like, in order for him to put up a ceiling game, he's probably going to have to knock down like eight or nine threes, score like 40 real-life points, which... He could obviously do against this Portland team and this really bad Portland defense, but I think there's probably just other guys I'd rather spend my salary on today. So we'll take a look at some other shooting guards. I think Jalen Brown's one of the guys we definitely need to talk about. So DraftKings, they did a really good job of bumping up his price. He's up to 8100 today. It depends on what happens with Jason Tatum and Gordon Hayward. If both those guys are out and Kimba's out as well, I think at 8100 like Jalen Brown would still be in play for me. He wouldn't be a must play by any means at this salary. I don't know what his numbers look like with all those guys off the floor if they were to all sit. But we'll take a look at him real quick. Um, I doubt we get much of a sample size, but we'll take Tatum off. We'll take Kimba off, and we'll take Gordon Hayward off as well. If I can find Gordon Hayward. Like I said earlier, we know Kimba's going to be out. Uh, Tatum was out Tuesday night. Gordon Hayward got hurt Tuesday night, so we'll just kind of have to wait and see what happens. But in those, or he's played 112 minutes with those guys off the floor. 31.6% usage rate, averaging 1.14 fantasy points per minute. You would have to assume he gets monster minutes, probably plays like 30, 36, 38 minutes. Um, if it's a close game against Cleveland, which I assume it would be, given how injury depleted Boston would be. So we'll just kind of have to wait and see there. Uh, but looking over to Yahoo, I think with just Gord or with just Kimball Walker already ruled out, Jalen Brown looks really good on Yahoo, even at $27. Now, if Tatum and Hayward were to both eat, be out as well, that would just make me like Jalen Brown even more. But I think with just Kimba being out, it, given it's a really good matchup against Cleveland, I like Jalen Brown quite a bit at his $27 salary on Yahoo. In order for me to play him on DK, I'm going to need all three of those guys to be out in order for me to pay $8,100 for him. So we'll just kind of have to wait and see there uh, what happens with Boston. This is a back-to-back -back for them, so they won't host a shoot-around, which kind of sucks. I doubt we get an update here until, like, well, they might release something on their injury report. Maybe we'll get something in the afternoon, but most likely we're probably not going to know any news on these Boston guys till like 5, 5.30, which kind of sucks. But if you get Kimba, Tatum, and Hayward, all three out, Jalen Brown's going to become a very, very good option, uh, even at an expensive price tag. Uh, but other shooting guards we could look to, not much stands out here besides guys I've already talked about. Um, in the 5K range, kind of the same thing, like not much stands out. I think Dylan Brooks at 5,400 you could look to against Brooklyn. I like that spot. Uh, should be a fast-paced game. Should be a high-scoring game. He's fine to look to. Darius Garland was out last game, which did allow Kevin Porter Jr. to slide into the starting lineup. Uh, he played 41 minutes against the Jazz, had 31 DK points. I think they probably could run a pretty tight rotation again, and they're going to give uh, Kevin Porter like probably 36, 38 minutes. Even if this game blows out, like there's a chance Kevin Porter still plays even in a blowout. The Cavs actually ran a seven-man rotation last game. Their five starters all played close to 40 minutes. The only guy who didn't was Kevin Love, but Kevin Love still played like 32 minutes. You had Larry Nance, Kevin Porter, uh, Jetty Osman, and Colin Sexton all play like at least 36 minutes, I believe. And then off the bench, I think... Matthew Delamandova played like 28 minutes, and then Ante Zedic played like 17 minutes or something. So we should expect another tight rotation from Cleveland today. Huge minutes for Kevin Porter. Should be more productive now that he's just getting more time on the court. Uh, that should help his fantasy production overall. It's not the best spot against Boston, but at 5,300, like he's still in play for me if he's going to play those huge amount of minutes. 
I do like him as shooting guard. I think he is in play in this mid-range. But then for value at this position, I mean, there's not much that stands out here besides uh, Brandon Knight, who is shooting guard eligible. If Knight sits, then you do have um, Langston Galloway, who can maybe get the start. Langston Galloway is only 3,600, would definitely be in play as a value option. I would have to assume that he gets to handle the ball a lot. If Knight were to sit, he might be the primary point guard. Usually this is a guy I hate rostering, but with just how injury depleted Detroit is right now in the backcourt, you could definitely get 30, 32 minutes from Langston Galloway today. And at 3,600, uh, he'd definitely be in play as a value option. Um, Denzel Valentine as well, I do want to mention 3,800. Got the start last game with Zach Levine out, played 21 minutes, was very productive, had 27 DK points. He's still relatively cheap today at 3,800. Um, it's a pretty nice matchup against Minnesota, a fast-paced team. If Denzel Valentine starts again, I think he's definitely in play at 3,800. Uh, I wish he would have got more minutes last game. I did actually have a good amount of interest in him once we got the news he was starting. Maybe they'll play him a few more minutes today if he does start again. So at 3,800, uh, that's a guy you could look to for value. But moving on to small forward, at this position, not much stands out at the top. Like Beal, I talked about earlier, probably get won't get to him much. I'd just rather play Luka. Even if, Jay, or even if Jason Tatum plays today, he's up to 9900 on DK. Like That's just a really expensive price tag for Jason Tatum. I don't know if I can pay that price for him. Even if Kimba sits and even if Gordon Hayward sits, like I doubt I'd get to Jason Tatum at that salary. If I was going to roster him, it would probably be on Yahoo. He's uh, $43 over there. Comparing his price to other guys, uh, he's the same price as CJ McCollum, a dollar more than Whiteside. Uh, like, if you're going to roster Tatum, I'd do it uh, over on Yahoo. Brendan Ingram, though, does look like a really good payup option, 7900 I liked him a lot Tuesday night. He had a relatively decent game Tuesday night, or at least last time I checked. Heading into the fourth quarter, he had like 36 DraftKings points or something. Uh, I would like him again here against Dallas, a game that should be fat, uh, played at fast pace, should be high scoring. Uh, Ingram's definitely a guy I like from the Pelicans again. Other small forwards, though, not much stands out in this mid-range. Otto Porter made his return from injury, was pretty productive in limited time, only played 17 minutes but had 27 DraftKings points. We don't know what his minutes restriction is going to be today. If he can play like 25 minutes, I think there's actually some interest in Otto Porter. I do expect him to be very productive when he's on the floor. Now, he shot incredibly well that game, 63% from the field, 60% from three. Don't expect him to shoot that well every game, but with all the injuries to... Uh, Chicago right now is in, with no Zach Levine. Like, Otto Porter should get a lot of usage when he's on the floor. At 5,400, if he can play 25, 26 minutes, like, I think he's somewhat in play at his, as a mid-range option. Uh, KPJ, we talked about as well, you could play at 5,300. In terms of value here, though, I mean, Trevor Reza's facing the Wizards. That's a fantastic matchup. Trevor Reza is never a guy like Rock or never a guy I like rostering just because he's not a great point-per-minute player. But we know he's going to play huge minutes. He's getting 36 to 38 minutes a night. Could maybe pick up some defensive stats here against a pretty sloppy Washington team. Maybe they need him more defensively to guard a guy like Bradley Beal. Uh, so 4,900, I could see using Ariza as a value option. Uh, James Ennis had a decent game last game, or actually, no, he didn't. I thought he did. I, I remember checking the game log. He started off really hot, but then I guess he kind of cooled down. Even if Aaron Gordon's out again, I doubt I'd go to James Ennis. That was probably that was a bad recommendation. Scratch that. Uh, maybe Kyle Anderson you could look to at 4,300. Another guy that uh, really kind of got killed by the blowout last game. Only played 21 minutes because of blowout, just 17 DK points. But I do like this matchup for him against Brooklyn. If we're going to get about 30 minutes from Kyle Anderson, which I assume we do get if this game is close, he can give you 25 to 30 DK points in this spot. I uh, did put up 27 DK points against Brooklyn earlier this season for what that's worth. As a value small forward, I think Kyle Anderson is definitely in play at 4,300. Like I said earlier, uh, Jetty Offman played huge minutes last game, 39 minutes. Still really wasn't that productive though, just 25 DK points. This guy's just not a good point per minute player. Even if he's playing huge minutes, I doubt I really go to him today. So yeah, I think that's it for small forward. We can go ahead and move on to the power forward position now. So up top here, or up top here, you do have Giannis 11-4 on DraftKings face the Pacers. So Giannis, I think anytime he's on a slate, he's definitely in play. Uh, this is a game against the Pacers I think can stay competitive. Uh, the Pacers have been a good team this season. They've been keeping games close against good teams. Uh, right now, looking at the line, Milwaukee's favored by 11 at home. I mean, even in blowouts lately, like Giannis has still been playing about 30 minutes, even in blowouts. Uh, when this guy gets his full allotment of minutes, I mean, he has monster upside, 65, 70 point upside. 
They've played the Pacers twice this season. Through those two games, he's only averaged 29 minutes, but he still put up nearly 60 DK points per game against them. I do prefer Luka for a little bit cheaper just because I like Luka's uh, matchup a lot more. I like the upside Luka gives us against the Pelicans. But, I mean, Giannis is definitely in play. I don't think he's my favorite payup option. He's not a guy I'm going to be going out of my way to pay up for today. Uh, but anytime he's on a, on a slate, I'm never going to say that Giannis is a bad play. I mean, he's always in play. Just The dude's just so consistent. I know he was disappointing last game, but you would expect him to bounce back here. Um, most nights he's giving you 50-50 DK points, or 50-55 to 55 DK points at the least, I should say. Uh, but other power forwards... Zion at 8K, I think you can definitely look to. Um, he had a huge game Tuesday night, which was kind of uh, disappointing because I didn't have much of him. I, I went to other guys like Brandon Ingram and Drew Holiday over him. But Zion at 8K, this is a back-to-back, -back, which is something to note. Uh, this is the first back-to-back -back he's ever going to be in, that he's been in this season, I should say. I think he is going to play. Like I, don't, I didn't see anything about them resting him on a back-to-back. -back. Maybe they limit his minutes, which I guess could be something worth monitoring. But assuming Zion's full go here, at 8K, definitely a guy you could look to. I think I'd still rather go to Brandon Ingram for a little bit cheaper, especially like on Yahoo where uh, Ingram is $4 less than Zion. Uh, Drew Holiday's $5 less. It's close though on DK. I'd probably sell with Ingram still, but both guys are in play. I like a lot from this game. Um, uh, Zion, Ingram, I think Drew Holiday, I think all three of those guys are really good options today. Uh, but other power forwards... Kevin Love's fine at 7,700. Uh, played 32 minutes last game, or 31, yeah, 32 minutes against the Jazz. Was pretty productive, 40 drafting points. Um, he did get the start at center with both Andre Drummond and Tristan Thompson ruled out. Uh, we do already know that Andre Drummond's going to be out. Tristan Thompson, however, is questionable, which is something worth monitoring. Um, if Kevin Love does get the start again at center, I have to assume he plays probably 32 minutes, 32, 34 minutes if this is a close game. He is very productive when he starts at center, when he gets time without Thompson and Drummond off the, or when he gets time with those guys off the floor. His rebounding numbers see a big spike, um, nearly put up a 2010 game last game. It was a tough matchup against the Jazz. Against Boston, like Boston's definitely a team you can attack with opposing centers. Um, so I do have some interest in love if Thompson remains out again. If Thompson's out again, I think Larry Nance at 6,500 is a great option. Even with this price coming up, like this guy still has massive upside. Played nearly 40 minutes last game against the Jazz. Uh, like I said earlier, the Cavs ran a very tight rotation that game. I have to assume that if Thompson is out again, they're probably going to run another tight rotation, maybe seven to eight man rotation. So I have to assume Larry Nance gets monster minutes again. On Yahoo, I think that's where he really stands out today. He's only 21 bucks over there. If Tristan Thompson's out again, which I think is pretty likely, uh, I don't see any reason the Cavs would have any, like, or why, would, why they would rush him back. I really like Larry Nance at 21 bucks on Yahoo. I think if uh, you want to go to him on DK, he's totally fine as well. But I'm much more interested in that Yahoo salary. Like, just didn't get priced up enough. I think he was $19 on the last slate. I can actually check that real quick. Yeah, or he was $18 on the last slate, got bumped up $3. Like, if Thompson's out and we're going to get 40 minutes from Larry Nance, like, he should be probably $28, $30. We're just getting a huge discount on him. Um, if Thompson's out, he's one of my favorite power forwards today. Um, but other power forwards we could look to. In this 5K range, I mean, not really much stands out here. In a fast-paced game against Portland, you can maybe go to a guy like Davis Pertons. Uh, Rui Hachimura as well in a really good matchup. Going to see a lot of Carmelo Anthony defense. At 5,400, he's another guy you could look to in the mid-range. But in terms of value here, you got Kyle Anderson you could play as a value option. Uh, Mitchell Robinson is questionable for the Bulls, so if he were, or not for the Bulls, for the uh, for the Knicks, excuse me, Mitchell Robinson questionable. If he were to sit, Bobby Portis at 4K could maybe get about 26, 28 minutes, uh, which would put him on my radar as a value option. But yeah, I think we covered power forward, so let's go ahead and move on to the center position now. So at center today, I really like some of these top payup options. Like, I like the matchups. Uh, Whiteside facing the Wizards, great spot there. Porzingis getting to face the Pelicans, uh, great spot for him as well. But these guys are very expensive. Whiteside's 9,500. Uh, Porzingis is 9K. I don't know if I can prioritize paying up for these guys when we have other studs like Luka, who I really like. Uh, we're going to talk about some mid-range centers that I like. I think there's even some value at this position we can target. So although it's a great matchup for both Whiteside and Porzingis, I doubt I'll really pay up for them today. Tough spot for Vucevic, but if Aaron Gordon were to be out again, uh, Vucevic does see a nice spike in usage with Gordon off the floor. At 8,500, even in a tough matchup, I think he would definitely be in play. 
Joe Valdo is probably one of my favorite plays on today's slate. He got priced up a ton. He's up to 7,800 on DraftKings, but this is a smash spot for him against Brooklyn. We know Brooklyn really struggles to defend centers. Uh, they struggled against centers all season. Joe Val absolutely went nuts against Brooklyn. Only 19 minutes, but he put up 44 DK points in 19 minutes against Brooklyn. At 16 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 blocks, and a steal in only 19 minutes. Now, I don't expect him to be that productive on a point-per-minute basis today, but lately the minutes have been trending up for Joe Val. Only played 25 minutes against the Hawks last game, but you already know that was because of the blowout. He didn't get any run in the fourth quarter. Assuming he plays in the fourth quarter, we're probably getting 30, 32 minutes again from Jonas Valanciunas. I have to assume if, if this game is close against Brooklyn, like Joe Val's going to play 30, 32 minutes. We know Brooklyn plays pretty big. They're going to have one of DeAndre Jordan or Jared Allen on the floor at all times. So I think that does set up very well for Joe Val. They're going to need his size out there. Like, I really like him in this spot. He's expensive on DK, but I think with the price coming up, with him kind of disappointing last game, maybe that keeps his ownership down today, which makes him probably one of my favorite tournament options on the slate. I think on Yahoo, he didn't get priced up enough for this matchup. He's only 29 bucks on Yahoo. I think you can go to him in cash games on Yahoo at that salary, just with how good the matchup is. Like, if you project Joe Bow for 30, 32 minutes, like he's probably going to project for like 45 fantasy points, which feels pretty damn good at only 29 bucks on Yahoo. And even at 7,800 on DK, I think there's 50, 55 point upside for Joe Bow in this spot. Uh, he's one of my favorite payup centers today. I think I'd rather roster him over guys like Randall, Christian Wood. Damn, even Zion, I'd probably take him over. Maybe that's a hot take, but give me Joe Val over all those guys. Uh, Joe Val's going to be a guy I kind of die on the hill with. Like, if he busts today, I already know my night's going to be over. If Joe Val goes nuts and he's low owned, then I'm probably going to be winning some pretty good money on Wednesday because I feel like I'm going to be very heavy on Joe Val in this spot. Uh, but other centers we could maybe look to. Talked about Larry Nance. I would really like him if Tristan Thompson's out. I'm assuming Thompson doesn't play. Anytime he's questionable, he usually winds up sitting, so that's going to make Larry Nance a really good option. Uh, Mitchell Robinson's questionable, so if he sits, Bobby Portis, I think, probably benefits there, gets more minutes. He could definitely be a viable, cheap option. One of the value plays, though, I do like at center. Maybe it's somewhat risky, but I really like Naz Reed today. Only 5,100 on DraftKings. Uh, he had a really good game Tuesday night against the Pelicans. Last time I checked the box score, he had like 35 DraftKings points heading into the fourth quarter. He was putting up a monster game. I thought that was a spot where Naz Reed was going to really struggle. With Zion driving to the basket, I thought he was going to get into some foul trouble. He does really have a problem with fouling guys, um, but he got his full allotment of minutes Tuesday. I can actually probably check the box score real quick. I'll talk while I check the box score, but if we're going to get like 30, 32 minutes from Naz Reed, which is what I think he plays, in close games, in games that do stay close, when he's not in foul trouble, he's going to play 30, 32 minutes. He did play 27 minutes Tuesday night against the Pelicans, had 13 points, 14 rebounds, three assists, one, uh, or 13 points, 14 rebounds throughout a double-double, three assists, three steals, and two blocks. Just a, mo a monster game from Naz Reed. Did have four fouls in 27 minutes. So that's the only concern you ever have with this guy is the fouls. Um, he does foul at an incredibly high rate. Five fouls against Miami in 19 minutes. Four fouls against Orlando in uh, 23 minutes. But when he plays his full allotment of minutes and is not in foul trouble, like he has 35, 40 point upside. This is obviously a fantastic matchup against the Bulls. Uh, the Bulls have been one of the worst defensive teams against centers this season um, in terms of defending bigs. They also are, have been one of the worst rebounding teams in the league. They do rank 29th in rebound percentage. So I think this is maybe another spot where we could see Nasri put up a big double double. I know the Bulls have allowed a lot of block shots this season as well, uh, so we could definitely see another big double-double with a couple blocks for Naz Reed. I hope people don't like go to him today because he put up a big game Tuesday. Even if he would have dud on Tuesday night, I still would have had a lot of interest in Reed today because I think the matchup is just that good. I think there's massive upside for here for him here if he plays his th full 30, 32 minutes. Give me some Naz Reed at 5,100 in tournaments. I think as a low own play, uh, it makes a lot of sense in that 5K range as sort of a cheap value you could look to at center. You could also go to Jared Allen as well. Uh, Jared Allen may be a little bit safer than Naz Reed. We know Allen's going to play probably 26, 28 minutes most nights. Most nights he's going to give you 30, 35 DK points. I feel like his floor is a little bit higher than Naz Reed's, but uh, you can't really argue against either guy's ceiling. I think both guys give you pretty big ceilings. Uh, but under 5K, if we're looking for punt plays at center, cheap options here. 
I mean, there's really not much that stands out. I know John Henson had a big game last game. He got off to a really hot start, but kind of cooled down later on in the game. Uh, finished with 25 DK points in 22 minutes. The minutes just aren't there for him right now. I still can't go to him, even at 4,300, even though he's kind of cheap. Just not getting enough minutes to where I want to play him at that salary. Uh, Thomas Bright has been starting recently, but his minutes have been somewhat limited. Like, he's just not getting enough minutes uh, for me to want to play him at 3,900. Now, maybe against a side white side, like you're going to need a big guy out there like a Thomas Bryant uh, to defend him. So maybe this could be a spot where Bryant picks up a few more minutes. But yeah, just kind of risky option to go to. So I think that's it for center, guys. I think we covered everything here. Uh, I think we covered everything for this nine game slate. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video. I really do appreciate you watching. Um, if you did enjoy, make sure you drop a like down below. I do always appreciate the likes. Uh, hit the subscribe button as well. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe. Click that notification bell as well, so that way you do get notified every time I upload. Also, if you would like, you can check out uh, my Patreon exclusive content, which is linked down below in the description. Get access to my article, my updated core plays, um, our Discord chat you can join uh, where we're talking through the slate. I'm in the Discord up until lock, answering questions, trying to help you guys out, build out your lineups. Uh, so if you want to check out the Patreon, you can check that out, linked down below. You can also give me a follow on Twitter, which is linked down below, at DFS by Noah. I am very active over on Twitter, um, so if you want to follow me there, greatly appreciate it. But best of luck tonight, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Peace.